In today's video, I want to show you in really simple steps how you can find the notes for your lead lines. By the way, I'm starting a new coaching group for Psytrance beginners and I put a link in the description box where you can fill out a Google form if you want to take part in it. Let's go a bit about lead creation. I had this lead here, but I'm not so satisfied with that. Um, so we are creating a new lead for here. Um, we are coming from this kind of like break asset part. I would just play a bit that you get into it. Then for this part, we need something new because the old one was not so satisfying. Uh, one thing I do when I create leads is either I turn off the crash or if you have a crash here in the beginning, which is playing, then loop a section where the crash is not playing because it will be really annoying when you do this. Um, then we loop a small section, like one bar, and here we will start with the creation of our lead. Um, you can make it easier if you put the scale in. I mean, you can use notes off the scale or you can use different scales in a track, just said. Um, but we will start easy um, today. First, we will look for the right octave. So we go down to A sharp one and I will go up. I think this is too high and everything between A sharp one and A sharp uh, three is quite nice. Um, so as we may want to move a bit, let's start here. And um, with this way I wanted to show you today is uh, really simple actually. We're just like scanning through the notes. Um, one thing um, which is really important, um, I set the um, the cutoff of the filter and the resonance and kind of like the parameters of the synth in a way I think it's nice without modulation. So um, you want to have like your synth set up in a way that it has a good natural sound. I mean, you, you selected the preset for a reason and it should sound at its kind of like nicest point there. So tweak all the knobs until you have that. And then we start um, with a note. You can start with the root, but uh, we will look uh, which notes are nice. I think this one could be nice. So we're dragging the next note. And then we look if we either go up or down. So I think those two, for example, were nice. This one is not so nice. It has that kind of squeaky sound in it, the relationship between those two notes. And I have the feeling it gets worse the more we go down. So maybe we go with one of those or we check out. I think those two had like a nice flavor together. So let's continue. And don't forget that we have a root note as well. <laughs> Could be The idea I want to follow here is I want to find like a scale inside of my scale. So once I have like uh, the root note and two 
two or three nodes more, then I'm usually folding here and limiting myself to those nodes. Actually, we have that case um, a little bit. We have two nodes, but maybe maybe we can look for one more to give some spice in. Maybe that one. Maybe we'll change it later. Then we can also look for the node lengths. And um, what's also nice if you have kind of um, a little bit of, how should I say, like, um, a musical motive where you can see a direction of movement or repeating patterns or um, same note steps. Um, so for example, um, like this, we have this whole thing we also have here. Um, it may be not too much here in that uh, melody, but um, sometimes you can really play on that and you can reverse those kind of patterns. And uh, once we found this, um, I then usually um, do one of two things. Um, so the first um, thing, especially on the that acid things, is that you can uh, play with the velocity because it's usually linked to the filter resonance. So happy with that. Let's go back one more, and we just keep it flat. But sometimes you really reach nice things. But now we will jump to the second thing I want to show you, and then we try this again. So the second thing I want to show you: you can um, try different start positions, and you can try different loops. Um, so different start positions. What I usually listen for is um, sometimes you have a more laid back feeling and sometimes you have a more fast feeling and I'm looking for a more fast feeling. If we start here, sounds more aggressive to me than this one. I think that that sounds more rushed and actually I, I think Psytrance is a lot about, for me Psytrance has two major sides. One is trippiness and one is excitement, energy and if we look for that then I would go more for that here like something like this um, but we will scan through all the positions and if you're going for something more trippy then um, Maybe I wouldn't even go like as square as that. Now we have all the same velocity, all the same note lengths. Um, we have a one bar repeating pattern and I maybe would take a longer pattern and those things. But uh, now I would say we are looking more for the fast thing. 
it's important that you re-hit play um, because otherwise your brain kind of like recognizes uh, the old pattern in it. And don't get tricked because there's some modulation on the um, on the filter and I'll take that out for now because maybe it's even in here no so we have um, here an LFO um, modulating the cutoff and I don't want to get tricked but I want And to compensate a bit for that, we will increase this one here. This is also a cool position. This makes it more laid back again. It feels more dragged somehow. This even more. modulation going on somewhere but this has more a trippy touch and I think this had a more energetic touch also cool but I think this one was my favorite This one is my favorite. So this would be the one way how you could do it. Then you just duplicate it and consolidate it. Go in, Command L and you have the new loop. Um, so we basically transformed the melody from here to this one. Now I want to show you the other way. Um, we will find loops within the loop. This is also nice. Uh, notice the starting position is now here. Um, so that could be something nice too. And what you can do from that is basically, uh, you can also consolidate it. And then you have your new loop, but it's like repeating now more. And either you wanna keep that shorter loop, or you go with the repeating loop and try to change a little bit on it. For example, Now we basically created a variation. So we have this one, we have uh, this one with a uh, shorter loop length. Um, and we can basically do the same here, consolidate this, go like this. And then we have our well variation short, short. A. And we have this variation, it's variation B. And now we can go again with um, trying to set the velocities. But for that, it will make sense to clean that out. So we removed uh, the automation here again, and we are without this. And 
we will also go back here. Quite nice, I think. Let's try here. on this one it doesn't change so much I will go back It's cool if we exaggerate a little bit uh, those um, kind of like offbeat positions which are kind of like not here with the kicks um, which can give some additional groove. I have actually a good example where this fits. This was the uh, melody before and I will place it short here. And I think this one um, has quite a good, you can see uh, how the velocity changes. So both are nice, um, but I think with the velocity change, it's a bit better, especially here on that one. Now we will select our favorite one. And um, so we have this one, the short one and the B word. Now I run out of battery with my camera, but we will continue here and I will use the version without the syncopation, just straight through. And what I basically did, I put this a little bit before here and now we can start recording the automation and you can put in this punch in and out markers and then it will only record where we set the loop here. So we can get a little bit into it here without recording actually. And then we are starting to record um, here to make this a little bit more interesting. For recording, um, I have an Ableton Push 2. Um, so that's really nice um, to have some knobs to touch uh, while recording. And I will start and look uh, what range I got um, and then record within that range.
So I think this one was nice. And um, now I will go a bit with the release. And we can add the resonance maybe manually. So we have a bit um, something which is a bit more straight in there. And now we will add a little bit of um, filter automation. I also added before the battery um, went out um, a multiband compressor, which basically pushed the last end here. Because um, if we look into our span, then you will see it's missing a bit in this area here. was a bit high here so I added also an EQ um, so you can see I have one EQ here which pushes it a bit down here and what we will do now is we will control the uh, very high peaks a bit um, uh, with uh, this EQ here and for that I will record and let's listen to it in context So now compare with the multiband and without the multiband compression. Um, I will assign a hotkey to this. Um, that's the good thing if you're in Germany, you have all that weird characters which are never assigned to shortcuts. I think the um, multiband compression is still cool. Um, with the EQ, I will check um, what happened here. So let's uh, copy this quickly. And then we will turn off all the bands. So I think it's better without that band. Maybe it was a bit over the top to have. Let's delete all this 
band three. And now we have created our S lead line and I want to connect it to the old part. Um, so because I put this here for my recording, uh, I want to go back uh, here and show you how I connected this. So what I basically did was um, I took the part here and I consolidated this. Um, because this is basically, um, so you see, this is kind of like my note pattern here. And what I wanted to do is, um, I wanted to have that straight asset going into the other pattern. And uh, we can still do that, but as we have a little bit different notes uh, now, I wanna go into this like this. We will take actually, this part here, copy it over, consolidate. And now what I basically wanna do is I wanna gradually um, go up here. Um, so for example, we could go like this. So the last notes are how we're landing on an A here. We're landing from A3, for example, F, we could try this and then um, maybe we go a little bit uh, less up so that we only have here we have the F and the E and here we only have maybe the E let's try that oh that sounds and we need to be Yeah, we need to be like that. Okay, I think that's cool. And so we can basically go in like this. We are picking up the pattern here and then going into it here. And the same uh, we can do here. So we can go like this. And then we put this up here. We'll just take the whole block here and place this in here and in here. Well, we just reduce it by one note all the time. So this one is going here and here. And uh, this time we're going only till here. And here we go only here. Like that maybe.
not too cool as I expected because the low notes here are not really heard much. So what we will do is we will bring this one up. Also not too cool. Maybe it's because of the filter. Yes looks like that. Or we just go like this. If you're interested in private lessons because you want to improve your Psytrance production, then you can find a link to my private coaching group in the description box below. So I hope to see you in one of my coachings. And if you want to know more about lead creation, I'll link up here to a playlist where you find more videos like this.